Hello everybody and welcome back to Fantasy Football Fix. My name's FBL Phillips and welcome back to another episode of Eddie versus the Algorithm. If you don't know what it is, then first of all, make sure you subscribe. But this is of course a series for those of you returning where we put the team generated by the Algorithm over at Fantasy Football Fix up against my own personal free hit drafts for each game week of the season. And we're seeing overall by game week 38, what is better, a computer machine or a man, albeit not the best FPL playing man right now. Anyways, what you're here for is the Game Week 20 team selection. Game Week 19, I would normally do a little bit of a recap, but we're still underway with that due to the fact that Chelsea against Fulham, which I think we all forgot about, is still yet to be played at time of recording. Nevertheless, let's get into things. Eh? We've got a double Game Week. We've got some key assets to discuss. Let's get into things. <laughs> And as always, we're kicking things off with the algorithm side. A 3-4-3 this week for the algorithm. Only three points shy of that 100 club in terms of predictions, which is a rare occurrence. We'll see in goal, it's going to be Edison that the algorithm has gone for, who seems to be the only real nailed Manchester City defensive asset. So I'd say it's a pretty sensible pick. As far as clean sheet odds go, Manchester City are right up there at the top, despite having two tough fixtures on paper, Manchester United and Spurs being those games. They're on a pretty bad patch of form coming off the back of that loss in the Cup to Southampton. Let's see if Pep can do one of his traditional turnarounds and absolutely go and batter someone in one of these two games. But the first match is up against Ten Hag's side and Manchester United, who have been in very fine form, who do always seem to turn up against City as well, be it for a few rare occurrences like at the Etihad. I think they've got a better chance at Old Trafford. Nevertheless, I think that with Cancelo being out of favour and no real attacking threat from any of the Manchester City defenders, then I think Edison is probably the best one to own right now. In defence, then, we're seeing a very surprising back three featuring two defensive Crystal Palace assets. And I went over, had a look at the clean sheet odds for that. They've got around a 34% chance. They're around 7th in terms of clean sheet odds for just keeping one clean sheet this game week. There's single game week teams higher than them in those odds, such as Newcastle. So I don't really see the appeal of it myself personally. Two games against Manchester United and Chelsea that are difficult fixtures. I don't really see a clean sheet in either for Crystal Palace. But the algorithm has gone with Mark Way. It's gone with Nathaniel Klein as well, who's been starting a few matches recently. You never know. Could be a wonder stroke and could pay off. The other defender I do like a little bit more in Ivan Perisic off Spurs. He seems to be getting forward and getting some very good attacking numbers in, likewise with Matt Doherty on the other side. Perisic seems to be the more favourable of the two if you're looking for a long-term option as well, with the fact that Spurs do seem to be in the market for a right wing back, but that's not going to play into account when we're just considering this one game week in isolation. In midfield then, we're seeing a midfield four that I really do quite favour. Wilfred Zaha making it into the side. He's still somehow in my own personal team. I had him in since we had those unlimited transfers, so I'm sticking with him for another week. So it's nice to see that the computer's backing him. Whether he'll actually deliver in those prior mentioned pretty tough games, I don't think we're going to see too much, but you never know. Could happen. More likely, he gets a penalty and misses it, in my opinion. The other three midfielders are pretty obvious selections in Rashford and Kevin De Bruyne, alongside one more differential option in the form of the Brazilian Anthony, who I think could be a pretty nice option to go for in this double game week. Pretty much everyone owns Marcus Rashford right now. Everyone's looking to own Luke Shaw as well. So the real decider is if, if we go for a third Manchester United asset, where are we going to look? I think the best options in midfield due to the fact that Dallow's now come off another game injured. He doesn't look like he's fully fit. I don't really back any of the centre-backs either. And now Anthony Martial's going to have some competition up front with Lou Veghorst joining the Red Devils. I think the midfield is the place to look and I think there's two ways you can go there. Either go with Anthony or you go with Bruno Fernandes. The one caveat with that being that there are a lot of good midfield options at the moment from other teams. So whether you want to double up on Manchester United is going to be your choosing. I think with the fact that we've got Martinelli, Odegaard, so many favourable Arsenal assets, Miguel Almiron still looking good, Kevin De Bruyne, who's in this team, I'm not convinced that I'd be doubling up in a personal side. But Manchester City and Crystal Palace, two pretty decent fixtures for United. Probably the most favourable set of fixtures in this double game week out of all the teams. 
And then finally, up front, we've got a forward line of Anthony Martial, Haaland, and then Harry Kane as well. And what a stacked front line that is. Erling Haaland taking the armband as well. Even a potential candidate for triple captaincy. We don't have that in this series, but he may be on it if you never know. If the algorithm did have the capability, would it have the triple captain armband on? I'm not so sure I see the appeal, so we won't be discussing that here. Anthony Martial, as mentioned, will now have some competition from that new Dutch massive man they've brought into their team. But that probably won't be for at least the first game of this double game week. I'm not sure quite how quickly Ten Hag is looking to introduce his compatriot into the side. Or whether he's even going to be able to displace Martial from the 11 entirely. It shouldn't make too much of a difference to Martial's minutes either way. With the fact that he's been coming off pretty early in Manchester United's recent fixtures. And then finally, Harry Kane, who seems to be ticking along with his old self that he was before the World Cup. Good to see that that hasn't affected him too much in the long term. He's got some games against Arsenal and Manchester City, who he always seems to do pretty decent against. So if you can get Harry Kane as a premium option in your side, it's very much suggested that you do do so. There's a slim chance with Harry Kane that many people will be deciding to sell Darwin Nunes for him. For that, I would just recommend making sure that Liverpool aren't going to have that double game week in game week 21, but they are a little bit rumoured to have. The more it gets towards the deadline, the less likely it looks that that game and double for Chelsea and Liverpool it would be will be announced, but still something to keep an eye on for you managers. But that wraps up the team here. We're just going to have a final look at the bench that I'm assuming won't be being used. But Botman, Bailey and Bueno on there. Some interesting picks. One of those in particular has actually made my side, which we'll go and have a look at now. And I've gone for a slightly out there unorthodox tactic. I've gone for five at the back this week to take on the algorithm. Featuring Perisic and Doherty and then a double up on the Newcastle defenders as well. Trippier was that key miss out from the algorithm side that I've got into my team. Luke Shaw as well has to be in there for me the form that he is in now looking like he'll be back at left back as well where he got his third ever I think Manchester United goal from in the last game week De Bruyne Fernandez and Rashford make up the midfield I do just favor Fernandez over Anthony even though he might not have penalties now Rashford did take Manchester United's recent spot kick and then I've had to drop Martial in order to switch to that five at the back formation Somerville on the bench is injured now so don't take too much notice of that uh, the latest quotes from Marsh have suggested that he's going to be out for a decent chunk of time but I've got Bailey down there on the bench if need be if something goes horribly wrong but with so many doublers I'm thinking that I won't need any of the subs in this team. As I mentioned, I've stuck with Edison because I think he's the most reliable Manchester City defensive asset. If I had to pick one, I would probably be going for either Rico Lewis or going for Akanji or maybe even Ake right now. John Stones isn't fully fit, otherwise it probably would have been him. I just can't guarantee that I can commit myself to a third Manchester City asset at the moment. Not in this or in my own personal side until maybe they nail down a, some sort of regular starting 11 that we can look to invest in as it becomes more crucial that we get those Manchester City spots full up with players that are actually starting games for them. But yeah, this is going to wrap up Eddie versus the algorithm for game week 20. As always, please do let me know down below in the comments who do you think is going to come out on top, the computer or myself or your team algorithm or team Eddie. Make sure to comment down below. And comment any other dilemmas you've got with your own teams over double game week 20. I'll be sure to get back to each and every one of you, as I always try to do down in the comments. Once again, thank you very much for tuning in, and I wish you the best of luck for game week 20. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon.